This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, leader of online cybersecurity education. Join more than 10,000 professionals from over 120 countries to learn security online. I'm Justin from Pentester Academy TV and I want to welcome you back to our show, The Toolbox, where we showcase the latest and greatest open source tools. Add them to your tool collection today. Let's take a look at the Invoke by Jean Mess from Belgium. So welcome to defeating EDRs using the Invoke. This uh, is a talk that I did uh, quite recently as well uh, during my working hours, but Pentester Academy was so friendly and so impressed by my tool that they wanted to uh, give me a stage to present it once again. So let's first talk about why the Invoke exists. And to do that, I want to go back a little bit into, well, the old ages. This is like the Windows XP era where pen testing was still quite easy and you just needed to fire up Metasploits, point it to your target, click, and there you go, you were in. There was no antivirus, there was nothing. Uh, everything worked perfectly fine. So a good thing here is that uh, well, defenses got better, of course, and that means that our offensive tradecraft needs to get better as well. So introducing AMC, uh, AMC, of course, uh, is capable of detecting a lot of malicious stuff, but of course, it's not foolproof. There are bypasses around that. As you can see here on this slide, uh, just uh, five or six lines of code and you can run Mimikatz once again without any issues. Then. It got even worse for pen testers and red teamers because EDR started coming up, which made it even harder because, well, now you have AI and machine learning and stuff to worry about. So that became a bit of a mess and a bit of a pain to actually well, get your payloads on there. And that's why the Invoke got, uh, well, got born, basically. And if you took the course at Pentester Academy about Windows process injection for red and blue teams, you should be quite familiar with how process injection works. And basically what it means is you have a basic loader that will allocate memory, write memory, and then create a new thread to launch your payload. So that is how it works in a nutshell. And of course, EDRs will block this behavior. And if EDRs block this behavior, that means your payload will not get fired. So the invoke makes it actually possible for you to create, it's, it's a framework written in C-sharp, so it's possible for you now to create system calls on the fly dynamically in your C-sharp tooling, thus evading EDRs using, uh, well, raw syscalls. And that means that you can now specify in your code, for example, uh, generic dot get syscall stuff with the API function that you want to call. It will then resolve that system call for you and then you can use it in your code. That means that you can now evade inline hooks and thus bypass EDRs and thus popping up your evil payload. Let's take a quick look at how that works. So here you can see I created a very cool proof of concept uh, called EDR goes brr and what it does is basically using syscalls to uh, well evade the EDR and popping that evil payload message box as a proof of concept. So there you go. The e invoke needs your help, however, it's still quite new. Um, so we want people to submit pull requests uh, with new delegates so we can actually map the entire Win32 API into the de invoke framework. So that was a bit of the slides, but of course, I want to show you a quick demo as well uh, so you can actually see it work in action. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the PowerPoint and I'm going to actually show you a quick demo. So first of all, I'm going to show you how it looks like without any EDR in place. So this is just a basic, um, well, shellcode injector like you would have created if you followed the course at Pentester Academy yourself. So you hit the keys and what happens now is that an evil payload will actually be popped. So there you go. That is what happens if you have no security in place and your payload just works out of the box. But what happens now if we introduce a mini EDR tool to this payload? So let me just quickly boot up an EDR for us that I created myself as a bit of a proof of concept. And we run the same payload once again. 
So this is without Dynamic Invoke still in place. What if we hit the key now? Well, now we get a message box from our EDR saying that we got detected. If you want to write the memory, we once again get a message box saying that we got detected. And then if we want to actually spawn our EVO payload, our EDR will not let us do it. It will say, okay, I'm not going to let you create a new threat, I'm going to kill your process. So what happens now is, well, my EVO payload message box did not pop up. This is because the EDR blocked that behavior. So what if we use the invoke? Well, let's find out what happens then. We're going to once again set up our EDR listener. But this time we are going to monitor EDR goes brr, which is the uh, proof of concept that I've written in the invoke. And now we're going to spawn our EDR goes brr payload. There you go. Once again, you get the notepad. If I now hit the key, I don't get a message box. If I don't hit the key again, I still don't get a message box. So the EDR is not picking up on our behavior. And then if I hit the final key to trigger our payloads, well, guess what will happen? The evil payloads pops up. So there you go. That is how EDRs can be defeated using the invoke. I hope this information was useful to you and I hope that this will prompt you to create or to leverage the invoke in your offensive tradecrafts. Thank you very much for your attention. Hi. Okay, so I just have a couple of questions for you. So that sure. Maybe so first would be what inspired you to actually create this tool? Well, actually, I'm just a, a co-creator. Um, so it actually inspired. So what happened was that um, the Wover, which is another very, uh, well, very smart open source toolsmith, actually created this. Um, well, because as I said during the presentation, it became harder and harder for red teamers to actually spawn their malicious payloads in environments that get very well protected. So we needed to figure out how we could, well, bypass these new defensive measures. And, um, well, the Wover himself also does a lot of incident response. So he saw that um, threat actors in the wild were already using system calls. And thus we created something that made it easier for uh, a bit less very deep technical people to actually have the same capabilities as a, uh, well, very smart and very powerful adversaries would have. Mm, okay, okay. So I believe also just now that you mentioned uh, there was an, an, an aspect of the tool that you would like the community to contribute in. So can you further elaborate on that? So Yeah, sure. No problem. So for offensive tradecraft, a lot of the things you need to do uh, rely on the, the Windows API. So the Windows API is definitely very well documented in the Microsoft documentation. But the problem here is that a lot of those API calls are written for C or C++. And the invoke is written in C Sharp. So what we need to do is we need to manually map uh, the C++ code to C Sharp. And that takes quite a bit of time, of course. Uh, we did it for a lot, of the sys a lot of the API calls already, but not everything is ported yet because the Windows API is quite huge. So if the community wants to contribute, it would be very nice if someone just uh, does some porting for us from the C++ code to C Sharp. So the, the initial dream or the goal actually for this project is to at one point in time, have the entire Windows API library ported into the invoke. Uh, but that's going to take quite a bit of time because it's, it's, it's such a huge API. Uh, but yeah, that would be the goal. So it's really a community effort. Uh, the more people that start doing work, the, the faster that we can actually achieve this. Oh, OK, OK. So uh, thank you so much. I want to thank you once again for coming on board our episode of The Toolbox today. For Pentest no Day. problem, Justine. And I hope that you enjoyed uh, sharing this as much as we enjoyed recording it. Yeah, of course. I loved it. Thank you very much for having me. For more information on this tool, see our description box below. Subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for the next episode of The Toolbox.